Hi, my name is Sean Taylor. That's my friend Chris Ford, aka The Objective Geek. And this week we're going to do something a little bit different. As you may well remember, Chris is expecting another baby in July. Is that right? In July? Um, well, you're way off. Way off? Am I not even... <laughs> Let me guess again. Uh, how about May? Is it in May? Yes. I'm probably the worst friend alive. So Chris is expecting a baby in in May. And therefore, because of baby things, I don't know, I don't have babies, but I, because of baby things may not have 100% availability. Uh, but fortunately, Chris has a backlog of ideas for, for videos, and so he's selected a few of those that we're going to use as sort of single episode discussions that won't be time sensitive, that won't be full podcast episodes or chronological or anything like that, that we could potentially use to fill in gaps in his unavailability. And so we have, uh, right now we have a couple of what if videos. We're going to film a what if video. You can probably see the title up there. It is called What If Katara Healed Zuko's Scar. So I'm going to let Chris walk us through kind of how the activity is going to work. And then honestly, he'll probably start and lead a good portion of the discussion. And uh, I'm pretty excited to try something different just because a lot of times we have, we, we have, I guess you'd call them debates or kind of back and forth. Uh, but this doesn't really have a, a, a right or wrong. It's just going to kind of, let's see if we can forge <laughs> yeah. the direction that it goes. And that's very exciting to me. So I'm going to let you take it away from here. If you kind of want to introduce the activity in. Yeah. So just started. setting up, uh, we just take kind of a flashpoint in Avatar and see where things would go in a different direction. I've done a couple of different short YouTube videos on this. Like what if Zhao, um, dang it. What if Zhao killed the moon spirit forever um, what if the captain didn't give away that Iro and Zuko were prisoners with Azula? Um, a couple of other other things. And the way that me and you are going to work this is that we're going to take that flashpoint and then we'll kind of conversate and and formulate um, how the story would progress from that point on, starting from that flashpoint and how everything goes. Um, a couple boundaries or rules is that you know we have to kind of think about like what the characters drives are what we think would actually happen how those characters would actually work out not necessarily are i won't try and be fan fiction even though this is fairly fan fictiony and not feel like i am sound yeah, fairly pretentious pretty much <laughs> <it's the same. laughs> i'm gonna try to not do what these people not. do when i do exactly what these people do because <laughs> they don't do it like me not they don't do it sure. how i want to see it <laughs> That's what happens. No, I'm, no disrespect to fan fiction. Um, I Chris, we were positive. supposed to be building a bridge to this group right yeah. now. No, I'm, I am. I'm positive that their fan fiction will be better than than ours. This is, and also, I'm not building this. I'm not trying to, at least in my opinion, I'm not trying to make like the best absolute story that there can be. It's just like, all right, these would be the logical things that would happen and the ramifications that would happen if this random thing didn't happen the way that happened in the show. It might not make for the best story element, it might not, uh, but like I said, what I think will actually, what happened? I, uh, I just hope my views aren't too boring because I, in, in all aspects of life, I tend to regress towards the mean. That's just my style. So <laughs> I, I'm gonna try to make sure that I'm actually using my brain and my creativity <laughs> and not just come back and be like, yeah, this would happen, but then nothing else would change because of this. <laughs> <laughs> I, will, I will do my best to act more like a normal human but uh yeah, yeah it's very and exciting. we made and and i've never done this with another human being before usually you know i'm just in my own mind i'm like oh yeah that would happen that would happen and so i'm sure me and sean will disagree on things we've already kind of disagreeing on, on some early uh test messages between each other and i purposely did not write you that much because I, I just like that conversation I feel like I gotta run by you to fact check. Like, there's almost always one thing that I'm not like something key, something pivotal that like I think I have this good theory, but you're like, hey, Sean, you this, but this, and I'm like, that ruins everything that I worked for. <laughs> yeah. So it's more of a fact check. But you know, I actually was surprised in in the the things that did align a little bit when we discussed. I didn't know where you'd be. So, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited though to get this rolling. Let's let's do it. Let's get. All right, let's do it. Let's, okay, let's make so a story. first one is, what if Katara healed Zuko's scar? So in the um, in the underground tunnels of the Dai Li under Lake Lao Guy, Katara and Zuko were 
both in prison together, and this is the Zutara moment that all uh, Zutara shippers love, and good for them. It's a it's a very Zutara moment. Can't lie, you can't deny that this no, isn't no, a Zutara yeah. moment. So I I won't deny them that. I mean, Katara is holding her face against Zuko's. <laughs> I'm holding her hand against Zuko's face. It doesn't get any more Zutara up in there than than that. I mean, uh, if that's as good as you've got to go on, then I guess he clinged to that moment. But whatever. Yeah. yeah. But there's a question about this: is that not only can Katara? It's not the first question is not what happens, but can Katara actually even heal Zuko? Um, the way water bending works is that water benders can sense the chi flow in, in benders and and when healing um, they can uh, they can kind of accelerate that chi to where the body would heal faster and it's not ne- not necessarily doing something out of the norm right like if you cut your arm off a water healer can't do anything for that your, your body can't naturally <laughs> grow an arm um, and in this case, Zuko has a scar. Like, scars don't naturally heal. Um, but the S factor here is that she has spirit water from the spiral oasis at the North Pole. Exactly how powerful is that? I, I'm, I'm not sure. I think you can make the argument either way that she could heal his scar or that she couldn't heal it. I, Sean, what's your opinion on, on that? I think her regular bending would would not heal it. I would like to think in yeah, my head that there was a some kind of reaction there, like maybe it's I don't know ages it or dulls it a little bit, but doesn't work. And the spirit water, I would say that that the only thing that we sort of have to work on, like in in this series, it's kind of a one shot. It's kind of a one shot potion, and we only have one piece of evidence, and it's a wound directly tied to ang. Aang in his avatar state or wound sustained in the avatar state and so I don't necessarily know that it would heal it I mean you could make a case because it's such an ambiguous tool yeah. but I don't know that it necessarily would heal this wound which is just a standard fire wound and as we mentioned scars are just a physical superficial presence that does not heal um, yeah and, and Master Paku his words were fairly ambiguous as well as like awesome. it's it's uh, spirit water from spirit oasis it has natural healing properties, or has? Do you say natural healing properties? I don't remember. No, it, you said it has certain. Mine says special healing properties. Uh, I can't really look it up now. But, but I would like when we say heal, well, we're talking about an injury or a break or something. But scars, in and of their essence, aren't really uh, something that's broken. They're kind of evidence of something that's already healed in a weird way. So I just have a hard time uh, feeling really convicted that even something like spirit water would heal him because it just it's not really broken. It's a scar. It's a it is healed. It's done. But I don't remember what Master <laughs> Paku's words are. Um, his words were. <laughs> why, why did I just Google just straight up spirit water? Spirit. <laughs> Chris, you gonna That's wind up on me. some shady some voodoo sites? Yeah. Hey, come get you some spirit water cures everything. You Corona, <laughs> probably. With, mm-hmm. It kind of makes people. me think of Chris Rock's joke about Robitussin. Yeah. <laughs> come get. I some. got shot. <laughs> I got shot. Well, Robitussin. Robitussin. That's what spirit. Well, that's what you gotta find. Just Robitussin. Okay, with the label so. Peeled off. Sometimes I don't like going to the wiki, but sometimes it's the only source. Um, the wiki always gives me <laughs> ideas, though. It really is like the Wikipedia of Avatar because it points yeah. me in the direction, and it is very useful for that. I think. Okay. So. This, uh, okay. So. Um, so Katara, when she's talking to him, says, "This is water from a Spirit Oasis at the North Pole. It has special properties. So I've been saving it for something important." Um, According to Wiki, spirit water is water imbued with spiritual energy, providing it with special healing properties. It is often taken from sources where spiritual energy is considered to be particularly strong. And okay, whatever. Possess special healing properties. Anyway, it's vague enough. I I kind of so now that I'm at a crossroads, at the crossroads of destiny. 
Oh, yeah. pun intended. All right, that's good wordplay, though. That's not crappy yeah. punnery, though. That's that's high level. I think I'm fine with saying Illy Hill Zuko Scar. Also, okay. I'm going to say that because I don't think it's going to... We'll, we'll keep going. Anyway. Well, so. it, I agree that it, it doesn't impact necessarily what's beyond this, and I don't have any evidence to say that it wouldn't heal it yeah. either so I, yeah i think that's fair we could say all right it I, does I think heal i think it. when it comes to <laughs> i think when it comes to things that i really have a kind of toss-up on maybe i'll just go the the more uh story will make for a better story although honestly both things can make for a good story no i'm, um, I'm with okay. you here even if yeah I, I think that's the right choice here all right so she heals zuko scar he is completely healed it looks like he was right before his father burned him um the thing, the reason why this for so many fans is a point of question is because a lot of fans think, oh, he'll, he'll flip sides right there. I don't think he'll flip sides because that scar is not necessarily the reason that, that he, he is what he is. He still has all that stuff about uh, pride and honor and daddy issues, and that scar is not necessarily going to heal him. Right, and also I think in the commentary, the creators, I'm paraphrasing here, but they kind of said that like he he needed more than more than that. Like that's that's not necessarily his journey. Zuko to me isn't all that superficial. That that would just change his his whole point of view on things. Yeah, when he talks about his scar, you know, it's a it's a painful reminder, but I, he's not particularly sensitive about it. Um, I think Katara's offer was probably almost as meaningful like to him as actually healing it in the sense of if that didn't change his decision making later on in the episode i don't think that you know actually healing it would have like pushed him over the top to turn good sooner i agree entirely that it would not have changed his i guess you'd call it like his immediate trajectory yeah um they also mentioned that like no matter how far you come, you know, you, you, you always, Zuko always had that, that thing dangling in front of him, that, that chance of getting honor and Azula is going to dangle that in front of him, no matter what, because <laughs> she is, she is so freaking Monster. good at it. Like also imagine if, if, <laughs> if, you know, the, the scars heal, she will, she'll play into that. She'll be like, Zuko, you will return a hero, father will see that you have truly redeemed yourself. You are no longer the scarred prince. You are the new Prince Zuko, the rightful heir to the throne. This is you the no face of the heir to the throne, and she holds up a mirror yeah. or something for him to look at and try to pull that superficial. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Azula, Azula will pull that that string or that those those puppet strings, <laughs> right? She's she's that good at it. So, I think Zuko she will truly still is a monster. Yeah. I think Zuko will still uh, be at his crossroads of destiny, and he will still choose Azula and betray. I don't know if it betrays the word because was he ever on their side to begin with? <laughs> not, not yet, not yet. Close. Yeah. I mean, he went through his little metamorphosis. It's like he was close. He was close. You know, he I betrayed Iroh. Definitely. The more he I think Iroh, about definitely. his metamorphosis, I think of like, you know, we always have that adage of "what doesn't kill you makes you stronger." And it, I, first of all, I don't think that's true. But second of all, when it is true, like, recovery is a long road. Like, he might have started his metamorphosis, but he wasn't done. This is all part of, like, just an emotional turmoil that is part of that recovery in his metamorphosis. Still, like, the... Sean, you look like you're wrapped up all in a blanket going through your own metamorphosis. It, first of all, I'm a computer. (laughs) Second of all, this is a Dragon Quest blanket. Third, it is, it's like... 50 degrees in this basement is really cold but uh it's not a metaphor i'm just cold no i just uh, mm-hmm. the metamorphosis is not a short you know he got through his one night of pain there but uh you yeah. think of it as like anybody recovering from any serious ailment or drug addiction or anything this it's a long road and this is still just part of that so but that being yeah. said there i do believe that we are getting close to something that it would change Right. We yes. Get, we get yes. The, yeah. This is the, the meat. Biggest thing he'll change, and this is probably the most confusing thing that he'll change. So, uh, they fight, and the fight pretty much goes exactly how it went before. Nothing changes with the fight. Aang, um, 
turns his back on Katara. He goes to the Avatar state, and Azula shoots him down with lightning, killing him. Well, in the show, <laughs> she shoots him down with lightning. He's falling down to his death. Katara catches him, gets him up on the Appa, and then she heals him with the spirit water. This is a point of contention, which doesn't necessarily really matter, but oftentimes Avatar fans argue, did Aang die or did he not die? I fully believe that he did not die because the lore in Avatar tells us that he didn't die because if he died, he would, the Avatar cycle would be broken. There'll be no more Avatar. Like that has been heavily said all throughout the series. If you die in the Avatar state, that's what would happen. And that's even, I think, uh, reflected in when he gets shot down, everything, like, you see his past lives going away. Um, that represents that. But he didn't die. Some people say, oh, Katara's healing water brought him back. But when people die, when the Avatar dies, and also when just people die in the Avatar universe, even though this can't be proven, so I'll just stick with the Avatar, they reincarnate pretty immediately. Like, they go into the next lifetime pretty straightforward from there. And so, even if, to me, you, you can't draw that conclusion that Katara Spirit Water just, like, went and grabbed Aang's reincarnation out of, soul out of, out of ether, whatever. Out of the universe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then put it back in there. Also, Rava was killed. If Rava is killed... She then immediately goes inside of Vatu, and she will be stuck in the Tree of Time, with Vatu also stuck in the Tree of Time. It is... makes it... Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> no, which, that's an a, a interesting point <laughs> there <laughs> as well. Um, so to me, Aang didn't die. Mm -hmm. I agree now, entirely, and it is easier to wrap your head around that if you picture the avatar spirit as as a real tangible thing that can die like if if it is if it does die like you don't bring it back to life if you die in the avatar state as you mentioned there's no no plucking it back just because it's a spiritual ambiguous thing but it's really not it is well defined it is a tangible thing and if it dies it's not coming back so i agree 100 percent that it did not that he did not die and I think, but I think the difference between, or maybe some difference between what you and I feel mm -hmm. is that I think that, uh, would you like to go first on this part? I don't want to stay with under. No, 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 you, you go ahead. You go ahead. Okay. So he, he comes down and the difference where you and I kind of stand is that mm -hmm. I personally feel that he is no longer in the avatar state and that he is alive at this point. So even if he did die, another avatar would reincarnate like even if Katara and that's not necessarily the path we're going to decide to go down but if Car Katara can't say him uh can't save him I believe that another avatar would have reincarnated you know he laid there in pain he took the lightning the fall did some damage but he didn't die I don't think he was in the avatar state personally I don't think we can find a whole lot of evidence to point us either way but <laughs> yeah so this is a it's a really good question <laughs> right because because <laughs> I was saying before that we could talk ourselves in circles about about this because Aang, Aang is shown to, he doesn't die immediately, which then tells you like, oh, how do you? What are the chances that the Avatar can even die in the Avatar instantaneously? <laughs> instantaneously, and I, I want the answer <laughs> to be like like what? highly like highly impossible. Like you got to straight up cover Avatar state head off. To make that well, Zaheer, Zaheer had the best plan. Zaheer had a pretty foolproof plan. He was like, all right, I'm going to poison her, and she will continuously trigger into the Avatar state until I kill her. Right. <laughs> and so she but, dies so from the poison. He, get, he got it. He kind of agreed with me in this sense that, like, no, if you don't die in the <laughs> state, like, he was, he was in that boat. I like that. But, so, the, I get what you're saying. I, I really do. I feel like... The way the story is structured, the way they visually showed everything, is that he was in the Avatar state. Because they showed the past lives kind of going away as if that was what was at stake at that point. Um, and, and to me, if it just takes... I know we, before I said, well, I'm not going to care about the story elements of it. But to me, that does take away some of the 
Well, it some, takes away some of the pre-established story uh, elements of it. Ah, there was something I was going to say that was going to back up my point. I forgot what it was. Ooh, uh, no. Okay. Talk about the um, ultimate cliffhanger, though. If Aang dies in season two, and then season three is ten years later when they find the next Avatar. <laughs> <laughs> the world's just in flames and the Phoenix King exists. <laughs> yeah, but... Alright, so... I... Ah, what was my point? Oh, so what I think happened and how I'm going to uh, argue against what you were saying before is I think when Aang was shot by lightning, he was sort of in this uh, limbo of being in the Avatar state. We, we actually see him um, kind of in that limbo when in that um, in that little video journey into the journey from the spirit world or escape from the spirit world that's out there. And to me, that kind of reinforces that a little bit. Um, like he had to, in that, he said he had to connect his past lives. You know, I'm not, I need, I'm, I'm, sure, I'm curious who actually wrote that because it's, it, it, makes the whole avatar world a little bit more cloudy <laughs> and makes the lore a little bit more uh, confusing. I, the, to... the thing that makes me accept your, your premise in general is uh, I always, and there again, I always kind of forget um, showing all the past avatars line up like the statues almost um, showing that and sort of visually representing what's at stake. Oh. Uh, I would say that's probably the point that I would have the hardest time arguing with. Like they're implying it right with, with yes. that. And, and I can, I can I can accept that. Yeah, I would say if it wasn't for that, I could see your your argument because he wasn't like was he in? To me, that that would have been just more ambiguous. That, I just want yeah, there to be know. this old wives' tale of like if you die in the Avatar state, you never come back. But then there's like an underlying joke is like joke is you don't die in the Avatar state, you get knocked out <laughs> and then you die later. It's just something we like to tell the the rookie avatars. You know, it's we really like to haze them. But no, I, I think well, the, the the visual imagery there um, defends your point better than mine, and I'm okay with that. Yeah. Um, okay. So, with that being said, Katara no longer has the spirit water. I don't think she's a good enough healer without spirit water to to save Aang. And. I would think that a lightning, and I say that because she couldn't save Jet. I would think that a lightning attack. Because she didn't really like Jet. <laughs> <laughs> Jet, I would save you, but uh, this doesn't look a, good. You're kind of yeah. a douchebag, and, and Sean like hates lying. you, so. <laughs> um, I've thought more about this throughout the day, so, uh, you know, you didn't finish yet, though. I'm matriculating what I you're going to say saying, in my head. I don't. I think Aang is dead for good in the Avatar cycle is broken. Because I am accepting that he is in the Avatar state, I, b I believe that the spirit water is would have been necessary uh, to save him. Um, if we had established the other direction, said, hey, you know what, he's probably not actually in the Avatar state, um, then I would have... It feels like it would give more grounds to like, hey, maybe Katara just being a really good healer could have had a cool character moment, uh, something really empowering, and been able to save him. But... Because we are establishing that he is in the, in the uh, spiritual limbo, if you will, that uh, it seems to tie better into the spirit water. So again, uh, you know, it's not as fun as I wanted it to be in my head, but I agree with what you're saying uh, okay. in, in this arc that we have discussed. Yeah. So from this point on, it's like, well, what the heck do they do? How the heck do they win the day? They <laughs> or don't. Win... Yeah, they don't win the day. No, Aang, it's, it's very morbid. So Aang dies, right, without the spirit water. Um, and from that point, so they go, gosh, do they bury him somewhere? I mean, so let's start with Zuko. Zuko still goes, um, he goes to the Fire Nation, right? He's still, um, still unsure of himself. If he did the right thing, if anything, he probably feels more conflicted now because he's even more sure that the avatar is, is dead. Especially right? because he's, like, he's so self-aware, he would have known that spirit water. Like he would have thought of that. Like, oh no, that was yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, oh crap, and that's a that's kind of really cool story-wise. Like every time he looks in the mirror, 
he sees like oh. this face calls the life of the avatar and then right? he looks outside and sees up. his world in flames and he's like my bad yeah so i still think zuko is going down the path of redemption but it's going to be even harder redemption because his his actions led to the death of of ang and so yeah he's going to be even more conflicted even more angry at himself i think so much so to a point that he might even burn himself back <laughs> to 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 get over it Iroh hit not, me <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah honestly if i would go to Iroh, like you know in those times when he visited him at jail like i deserve punishment like fire bend my fate like punish me and i of course be like no i think you've like, I'm not. punished yourself enough or something something very wise like that yeah you know i see yeah. i totally see I, uh zuko maintaining the same path um i don't this is me being boring it's like i don't see a, a scenario in which the good guys win because uh that just seeing the battle between ang and, and ozai is such an awesome battle i'm like nobody nobody's taking that guy out nobody um, he's gonna have to die on his own, and then Azula is still there and presumably less crazy in this all right, timeline. So, all right, so so Zuko is still going down that pathway. We, I, all right, yeah. uh, so Team Avatar still. I don't think they would give up. I think they would still no. kind of ga- gather their forces and would they know the that the Avatar was gone? Like, would they even understand, or would they have some amount of hope that it? Like, they're thinking like me, like they didn't see those past lives. They hope the next one pops um, up. I'm, that's. I mean, I'm. They never showed this, but I'm guessing Aang has told them before, like, "Hey, if I die in the Avatar state, the Avatar cycle's broken." Like Roku told me that a while ago, but I don't think this ever uh, as, uh, explicitly said in a show that they know exactly all about how the Avatar works. <laughs> so that would be like yeah, a they, crazy they, side theory that Sokka had. Like, what if he didn't die in the Avatar state, and so Sokka goes off on this random-ass adventure, just looking all over for the next Avatar for ten years, <laughs> and never finds him, and it's just a really depressing, like, downward spiral. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I mean, well, they, they have to address immediate future, because the hundred because they know Sozin's comment is coming. They know that the Fire Nation will rule everything. Although they got to the point there... Wait a minute. Yeah, okay, so they're still planning the Day of Black Sun. They'll still gather their forces. If anything... Gosh, they got no plan, really, to go against the fight. I mean, they'll still try. Um, but yeah, how, how, many, how does Day of Black Sun go without Aang? I mean, really, it probably goes the exact same way, but they have less hope. Um, I think there is I, more... I think there's more hope ruined during the day of black sun yeah. more more depletion of forces and and no actual plan or leadership at that point you know does now, Zuko still go back at that point and still go try to help yeah, that's kind of cool here's 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 where i think iroh comes into play right because i think iroh knows what everything is happening because iroh has people all over the world i think he's still getting a lot of intel i think he got the clue that hey the avatar is dead like dead dead <laughs> And this is going to um, expediate Iroh's plans. <laughs> Iroh has to be like, I gotta be wait. I can't just wait for Day of Black Sun. I gotta get the ball rolling now. And I think he will be. I think he might get Zuko going a lot faster. Like Iroh will know. I can't wait for the Day of Black Sun to to go against the Fire Nation. I gotta get Zuko on board. Like episode, pretty much right when he tells him about the Fire Lord and and Avatar. After the Fire Lord episode, like Zuko needs to be on board at that point. And I think once he gets on board, I mean they then meet up with Team Avatar, and that's that's their best plan is for Iroh and Zuko to team up with Team Avatar minus Aang and on the, the day of Black Sun. The White Lotus, um, probably. With the White Lotus, yes. That's, that's yeah, gonna be a big exactly. part. Like that's the only I mean, physically that's the only real fighting chance. But that's that's a really good point because the White Lotus is, is stacked, right? With the benders of of all the nations and the ninety eight bowls thing coming out next week. That's what the White Lotus is. It's the ninety eight bowls right there. 
<laughs> yeah, like you're gonna have ah, though Boomy didn't escape. So Boomy won't be there because Boomy didn't escape until the day of Black Sun. Oh, and I don't think Boomy would have gotten word that he needs. Unless, well, oh, okay. Oh, come on, Iro, Boomy, Boomy has no, we'll, his we'll, ways. We'll make up. Iroh Iro knows he got to get the band back together. He goes and gets, he breaks Boomy out before day of Black Sun. That's, yeah, that part's going to be knows, fine, I think. Yeah, I think he knows he needs Boomy. Um, and then, of course, he gets Master Pandao. He gets Master Paku, who's like, dang, I should have packed two spirit water things. <laughs> Why didn't I kill Katara two of them? I hope he's Would've secretly been like, hoarding like, a whole jacket full of them, and he opens up his jacket and just thinks of what an yeah. asshole he was to Katara. <laughs> um, yeah. So, so then... Oh, you, you go ahead and go. I want to see where you go from here now. right? So right now, we're at the point where um, Iroh... And Zuko needs to formulate a plan before Day of Black Sun so they can combine pretty much everyone's forces to go against the Fire Nation. I think, uh, you know, I wouldn't have thought of the things that you have said now, but where your story leads me is, all right, so he pulls this up and they have this invasion ahead of time, essentially like pulling up that that group from the last episodes into the Day of Black Sun. Yeah. Um, but the issue, I think, or, or probably... I think that Zuko and Iroh are too smart. They're not going to do what was done. They're not going to swing and miss mm. on the day of Black Sun. So does that, uh, you know, maybe it does one of two things. Does it A, give them an edge? Because it's like, well, the Fire Nation doesn't know that we know that they don't know that we're with this group. <laughs> or is it, yeah. a, is it a detriment because they're like, no, we can, your plan that you had is wrong and it's not going to work. I'd like to think the former just to be able to further the story. And because, yeah, maybe the Fire Nation doesn't know about Zuko yet. They don't know about the White Lotus yet. So the Fire Nation's like, no, we're going to be hiding. They're going to come, yeah. mess up, lose. Um, so maybe that's like maybe that's the only plausible way that well, they really do stand a chance. Is the element of surprise. Like, no, we know where you're hiding. We're going to send this yeah. decoy in uh, to do what we said we were going to do. But then in reality, we're all, we're all going in the back door. Yeah, and Iroh... He he knows Fire Nation. <laughs> he knows it up and down. He knows the whole anybody. freaking thing. And I mean, Zuko has yeah. been around a while, too. He's going to know the tricks. Yeah. And also, Iroh is probably the greatest military strategist of anyone left over. Like, Ozai didn't get... Ozai wasn't in the army like, like Iroh was. Iroh has way more experience than that. And so, I, I think it could play to their benefit <laughs> really without Aang. I think it can't well, get not, any not worse. without Aang as much as just having the benefit of, of, yes, of, of, of having a, earlier. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yes. But Aang being dead, I mean, that's going to give some false confidence and if nobody's paying attention to White Lotus. But I, I know we're yeah. still talking about, I still have a hard time seeing seeing the victory but at seeing least bit, yeah. at, at least we have established uh, what seems like a pretty reasonable plan. Uh, you know, it's, yeah, yeah. I'm thinking about I think, like I think this, this is... episode that I would watch for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think this is like the probably the final battle, right? This is what going into Day of Black Sun, what we thought was the final battle. I actually think this would be the final battle because if you lose here, I mean, you pretty much out your best surprise <laughs> yeah. attack, your best, your best forces. Um, yeah, and then Zuko so... wouldn't even Zuko wouldn't even know in this scenario. He wouldn't know about the plan to go to the Earth Nation and burn everything to the ground. Um, so that they wouldn't even though know those next steps um, if this part failed. So yeah, they would, this is yeah. this is the season finale right here. Exactly. Yeah. All right, and walk so us through, though, we'll what come happens. down. All right. So the big bad is Ozai. Iro it has to be Iro versus Ozai. That's gonna be fun, <laughs> right there. Yeah. And again, Zuko versus Azula, right? And then maybe you have still a there. similar turnout. Is that fair to say? Maybe a similar ish. Has, has Katara um, forgiven Zuko because she healed his face, well, and then she betrayed him, and that caused the death of the Avatar? <laughs> so that's that's going to be a, a, a big thing. Can Katara learn to forgive Zuko because he is directly responsible for killing? Aang. <laughs> I vote funny. yes because of the presence of Iroh. I vote yes. That is the intermediary that would have yeah. sped everything up and is essentially what we're doing with the rest of this story. If if Iroh <laughs> looks and says, Katara, this kid is, uh, he knows he was wrong. He's sorry. We got to work together. And then Katara's not dumb. Like she might sentimentally hold on to some, some stuff, but yeah. she's not an idiot. She's going to be like, all right, you know what? 
I think they're right. You know, this it's, is our only chance. It's funny. It's funny. I was thinking about this because for a lot of Zutara fans, this what if is like, all right, if, this, if they if she healed him, in fact, there's fan fiction on it. If she healed him, then then Zutara happens, right? They uh, they go off, they get married, whatever. We just um, made it sound like it's, less possible. <laughs> Yeah, so because we took so away in my head, this moment thought, that's on the screen. Other way, this moment we took yeah. away this moment that's on the screen. <laughs> yeah, but in my head, at first I was like, "Oh, hey, Zutara fans, it's okay. We're gonna take away that moment." But Angie is out of the picture <laughs> now. Zutara might happen, <laughs> right? But <laughs> no, I still think it's. I, th- I still think it's uh, very yeah, unlikely no, based on what we yeah, have established. She, she might one day forgive him for for directly being responsible for Aang's death, but she's not gonna forgive him to the point of like, he's he's looking he's looking good now. This is a I huge moment him. over here for Zutara fans. This is Zutara fan, fan moment number two. Like if what we, it Crossroads yeah. of Destiny is one, this is number two. This doesn't happen, and she's more pissed after number one. So I think yes. Zuko is <laughs> is striking out still. But yeah. uh, oh, uh, back to the fights. So. Right, the good part. Zuko, <laughs> Zuko versus Azula. So Azula is actually going to be probably Zuko, Katara, Toph versus Azula, May, and Tai Lee. Because at this point, Boy and Rock would have never happened, and and uh, Boy and Rock would have never happened, and Azula would still be on her A game. She wouldn't have gone crazy. <laughs> but do so she's. Do Miley and Ty- Miley, <laughs> do May and Tylee still uh, still turn? Does 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 May I, see Zuko and Iroh and kind of like, oh shit? I could they s- think this is the last. Now the thing is, I could see that happening. I could see, I could see a situation where Azula is about to kill Zuko, and she's like at the and, lightning gun, and, and May. Yeah, the thing is, May and Zuko still got back together, right? You know, that that still happened, mm-hmm. even uh, just the same way. And so she still has feelings for Zuko, so I could see her Maybe she possibly... runs away with him. Maybe he explains this metamorphosis and she goes with him the first time. Maybe not. I just like to throw I'm yeah. throwing that out there. But I, I could see May still betraying Azula and on the day of Black Sun. Um, me too. And also Actually, how... Me too. Yeah, and Ty Lee would, Ty Lee could easily um, neutralize Katara and and uh, and Toph. I mean, she's she's seen to be able to do that. Like it's, I haven't seen a bender go against Ty Lee and just own her. <laughs> the stakes would be very similar. You'd still be talking about Zuko versus a game Azula which is exactly mm-hmm. what happens at the Boiling Rock for the most part. So the stakes would be extremely similar uh, without May's familial ties even. So actually it might be uh, less pressure to to just follow Zuko. Um, so my point is I can absolutely see that still turning and, and turning the tables of that fight. But in, so instead of turning a table and getting away, uh, turn a table and maybe beat Nazula. Yeah, yeah I, I can see them beating. Azula, but the um, other one. Now, though, I... uh, we still have Boomy. I mean, the thing the thing about Day Black Sun is that you have like a eight minute window of firebending is having no firebending power, right? Also, so are, think... are, are we comfortable saying you know what Iro Iro got them wherever they needed to go in the eight minute window or before the eight minute window? Are we are we comfortable presuming that far? Yes, but I, yeah, I think, I think I he got them point. where. They... Yeah, um, I was gonna stat- strategist. That I think he would get that done. Um, if anybody knows the where ish- they're hiding, it's probably Iro. Yeah, but I kind of feel like they would still that eight minutes is still really short, and there's yes. enough manipulation time for Ozai and Azula for for them to get past that that time limit. And are the Dai Li present? Yes, Dai Li's still there. In fact, yeah, Dai Li is still there. I mean, and White maybe... Lotus versus Dai Li, sure, but just think time-wise, though. You know, you're, you're in a window. I... I mean, before um, Azula only brought back maybe like a dozen Dai Li agents. I don't think she brought the whole horde back because they still need to rule over Ba Sing Se. And so I, I could see... Maybe... 
Maybe she leaves them because they don't. The avatar's dead, and the in the cycle is. But she thought the avatar was dead, and she brought them. So never mind. That's a stupid idea. Because they thought the yeah. avatar was dead, and they still came. So all right, scratch that. My bad. I mean, I guess it comes down to is that do we think the White Lotus, Katara, Saka, Toph, maybe even Ty Lee in May, if they flipped. I think and we're Iroh. committed to that at this point. I think we're committed. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Could beat all the firebenders and also beat um beat uh Ozai and Azula. I think I feel I'm like... good on the Azula part, but I think it's because there's yeah. a split. So it's not all against that group. It's, you know, this group against Azula that I say yes, and so then it's the other group against, you know, Ozai and his immediate troops i think right because i feel like we've agreed that azula would go down especially in that window yeah i think and, so and uh so i i think but then you have to separate that group out but i think that's the weaker part of the group i think the white lotus on ozai is the right you know especially if all the other white lotus is taking care of the outside business well then is it's iro doesn't have his fire bending but does Iroh have the outs... Oh, see, it's actually, this is turning into something really cool because you'd get uh, Iroh versus Ozai with no bending. You get a stumpy yeah. little Iroh versus... What, what does he know? What has he uh, accumulated in his time in the White Lotus and as a very spiritual human to use as a weapon against the same level of defenseless Ozai? That might actually be a lot oh, of Oh, do we think... Uh, would any of the White Lotus help out Iroh in that fight. I would think that they would. I think they would split up. Iroh's not think... proud enough to deny it. Like, Iroh's not going to be like, it's my destiny to fight my brother. Yeah. I don't <laughs> think so. I think he's like, no, we got to take him down, and I can't fire Ben. So actually, maybe I yeah. want those other guys. Uh, yeah. And if anything, he might be like, hey, history, if a brother kills, an, like you said before, if a brother kills another brother, history would just look on it as another brother grabbing power. If he does it as like a unison, it would be like, like, have Master Pian down there because he's Fire Nation. Have uh, Boomy there. Uh, Fire Nation Haku. slash my favorite. Yeah. Um, okay. No, I think I think we're to that part of the story I mean, where we have to decide: does, does that group beat Ozai and whatever sort of immediate surrounding would, forces and troops? I would think even with Sosan's Comet, that group could possibly beat. I think I, I think Ozai versus Ira one on one. It's not a popular opinion, but I think Ozai would win. He's younger. He's sure he's not as spiritual as Iroh, but but he looks he, like a martial artist. Like, come on. Yeah, he's and he's been working out for a while now. Yeah. Right. Iroh Iroh didn't have as much time to get back in full shape because uh, he was pretty much in full shape in Day Black Sun. Never mind. But he's that. also really uh, old. Yeah, he's really old. But I, I do think with the help of of Piandal, of Bumi, of, of Paku, that he can beat Ozai. Let's be real. Bumi and Paku would be the biggest help against a non bender yes. So if you have Piandal, yes. like, taking out all these hapless troops by himself and say, I want all of my bending prowess. We're going to wrap him up. We're going to freeze his ass. We're going to whatever we got to do. Mm-hmm. I think those are the two most helpful persons in this fight. You know what? I, I can see. You've, you have a... You've, you've talked me into that likelihood. <laughs> so that means that uh, Team Avatar would win, right? They, they <laughs> in theory, because the big bads are dead, and then when powerful yeah. people, bad guys, especially movies, dead, you know, everybody else kind of scatters. Uh, but the world, oh, yeah, like, and at this point, the world's still yeah, missing and also, an Avatar. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, yeah, yeah, but also like I do think Ozai's dead. Mm-hmm. I don't think Iroh or any of them have a problem killing Ozai. <laughs> the mm-hmm. Ang had. Mm, they're not air nomads. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Boomy, Boomy will crush those eyes a joke. We'd do it oh. for, a, for a chuckle, you know. Ooh, this is this is an interesting question. Does a, does Katara kill Azula for killing Aang? Yes. We've do you think seen, yes? We've seen Katara get real mad. But I, I could, I could, I can see I'm Katara killing no. somebody. I guess okay. I'm gonna say no because. She's gonna know that Aang wouldn't want her to do that. Right? Oh, take that, Zutara fans! The- 
Like, I can see Katara, like, I'm going to kill you right now. Like, almost. You're it's, just, it's, you're recreating. I wish, I wish you knew blood bidding at this point. You're the, recreating the, the scene yeah. with, with mom killer over it. And I'm, I can accept that because Aang was not there. Zuko was there. She had every reason to kill him, and she did. So, that's fair. I totally get that. So, Azula lives... Uh, but Ozai's dead, definitely dead. <laughs> Maybe Azula gets blood bending. Blood bend. Well, she doesn't know blood bending at this point. Although it would be a full moon. She does I too, wouldn't... doesn't. She? Well, she doesn't learn blood bending until um, after Day of Black. Wait. No, she does before, right? She does blood bending early season three. You're right. Yeah, so maybe it's like, she just it's like, it's like episode. Ooh, man. What blood if, bending Azula. What if Hama? Ooh gets to help bloodbend knows out of death sorry oh you know at this point at that, this but... point i'm sure they're helping they're they want any help they can get <laughs> listen hama i know you're whatever but we could we could use a woman like you with your kind of vengeance no uh i think katara let's let's say she bloodbends azula to control but decides not to kill um yeah. that's like an energy oh, bending I... equivalent in my mind in, in yeah i'm imagining I like the blood coming out of Azula's eyes and like Katara just like <laughs> oh, and then she finally drops her knees that's why, and like, I can't do that's it that's why this path wouldn't. couldn't be taken in the TV show because we just killed the Avatar <laughs> and pulled Azula's blood out of her face yeah it's getting a little violent alright so uh, 100 year war ends which I'm, su- I'm surprised we got to that conclusion and Zuko I'm- I am too but I really I'm very it's very it happened in a very satisfying way i think zuko still <laughs> takes the throne I oh think that's that's take, sure iroh should yeah. but i but why would he for the same reasons that he didn't you know so yeah. I, zuko still takes the throne so i think you know politically the landscape after that is similar to how it actually happens in the comic books um uh, but you're 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 missing an avatar though still like yeah, everything after that's being... wildly different that, that's probably yeah, a whole so... 10 other episodes of like alright well how does Republic <laughs> City happen without an avatar and the triads and... <laughs> <laughs> yeah so with Ozai dead Zuko has no leads on fighting his mother you have to kill so... Ozai because he can't take his bending away you just gotta kill him that's yeah. fair and I don't know yeah. what you do so... with Zuli you chain her up or something I guess I... <laughs> yeah she she'll she'll still go crazy. Yes, yeah. right. Her friends for the betrayed same, her for the same reasons that the friends turned. Yeah, same yeah. ish circumstances. Yeah. Um, so Ozai is dead. So he can't tell Zuko. He can't manipulate Zuko into finding his mother. Oh, um, I forgot about that bit. I'm not well versed enough in the yeah. comics. I'm gonna fall apart here. <laughs> that was fun. We'll kind of jump to Legend of Korra here because there's even more ramifications after that. Um, Republic City is probably still built, I would think, um, because those confrontations still happen. Well, and I, think, again, I think the political climate doesn't doesn't really change much. Yeah. And there was nothing earth altering or world altering in yeah. between this event and Legend of Korra. Yeah. Um, so when it comes to Aang, all right, Aang's dead. Avatar's dead. Aang's to me, Aang's spirit would still reincarnate without Rava, right? So when Rava dies, she goes inside of Atu. When Aang... And it kind of splits them apart, right? Um, so now Aang's soul, or Wan's soul, can now reincarnate to anyone. And really, it doesn't necessarily matter who that is. Although, if I, if I look at my past Avatar theories, whoever he gets reincarnated to would still have the four bending principles. <laughs> Because, because in Legend of Korra, book two, when Rava was ripped out of Korra and she was destroyed, Korra could still airbend and waterbend. And so she still had the four bending principles. And so in theory, I think she'll still be able to pass that on because her, her soul, those chi patterns are open and she can pass that on into the next lifetime. But uh, but with this being no longer essentially have access yep. to the Avatar state, yeah. you don't um, have any so access you, to Avatar state. 
in theory, you can have... even be shitty at all four bendings. Like, you might not come out a great bender. You're like, you can do all four. Yeah. But there's still an okay chance <laughs> you might be, like, early yeah. on Zuko at all four. I think it's, they would be the Avatar, but they wouldn't really be that. To me, because the Avatar isn't the four bending things. The Avatar is Rava being one person and uh, being a fused combination of spirit and human in, in the form of in the form of a, of a human being. Um, so really having this four bending principles wouldn't be uh, all that important because honestly we've seen Aang and Korra lose plenty of times without the Avatar state. Because um, like, oh hey, you're just a slightly better bender than it most would people. Sort of be, I'm but, equating it to like the well, modern day. Better. It's like the modern day monarchy in England where that person would sort of have like a like a yeah. seat, like a like a visual seat. Like, hey, this is a descendant of the Avatar, and look, they can do party tricks with all four elements. Yeah. But they're not the av- like they're not in a, in a place of power. Yeah. It's a it's a figurehead at best. They are the Queen of England. That's what that Avatar would be. Yeah. So not, not so Aang would die. He would reincarnate into someone, and it would probably to my to me it would still be the Water Tribe. Um, but it wouldn't be Korra because Korra is not born for another whatever years. True, we had a swing and a miss there. <laughs> yeah. Um, and there's so a chance that comes... nobody would know, like, this would be unprecedented. Nobody would be on the lookout for this person. It would just happen at some point. Some water tribe person would be like, Mom, I can move that rock. And then yeah. people <laughs> yeah. would have to ask questions and do lots of investigations to maybe yeah. arrive at what you have suggested. Yeah, so then, I mean, it'll be even harder to find the next Avatar because they would have no connection. You can't do those tests any, anymore because they would have no connection to their to their past lives. They would have, uh, you know, nothing, nothing there. They would have no Rava, none of that, but they would just have the four bending things. <laughs> you know, it could turn um, out to kind of a cool, uh, like a maybe an origin story of sorts where so nobody else and even as a reader or whatever like maybe you don't know that that's what this person is it's just like hey this kid was born with the ability to bend all four elements out of this water tribe place and first she's like solving local crimes and then she realizes that she has a greater responsibility and she's looking for it and so she discovers on her own that she is like the reincarnated of the incarnation of the person who was the avatar not really the reincarnation yeah, no. of the avatar and so it'd be like a really cool one-off not not really a chosen one story almost the opposite of like <laughs> the the come from nothing story yeah mm-hmm. um so when it comes to legend of Korra timeline Korra would not exist really um one day she might be born but she won't be like the same person because she won't be the reincarnation of Aang um, even even if that person, even if the new water tribe Aang dies, they wouldn't be. They would go probably into Earth nets or something like that. Um, but season one of Korra, um, Republic City will still be a thing, which means um, Noah Talk, not Noah Talk, um, Yakon will still be a crime lord with his blood bending. I'm guessing he was still no blood bending. And Aang wouldn't be able to stop him, so he would just rule Republic City, and he would still be doing crime. <laughs> but <laughs> but if energy bending wasn't like invented, do you you think that guy would still? Do you think energy bending would still be invented? Uh, no. Or discovered, or yeah, no, because it took the Lion Turtle to to do that. I mean, maybe a Lion. This is more far fetched, but maybe oh, I guess, a Lion Turtle. I'm sorry, I said energy bending, but it's a. Uh... It's not though, right? It's a uh, blood bending. Oh, that he, the blood that Amon's bending. Using no, for uprising. Because I don't. So Amon would never be Amon. Amon wouldn't be born, <laughs> right? Because Noah Talk would have no reason. Noah Talk never got defeated mm-hmm. by Aang, even when, um, even when everybody confronted him when Sokka uh, found him guilty, he just took everybody out and then he left. He, his plans was just to leave and start again somewhere else. So he would just keep doing that. I don't think he would leave to the uh, Southern Water Tribe necessarily. And also he wouldn't like instill into, even if Noah Talk was born, Noah Talk becomes a Mon, he wouldn't instill like this hatred for the Avatar in him. 
Because uh, Avatar never took away his bending because Aang was dead. Um, I would suggest that at this point there are like the, the there are sort of too many branches to even conjecture at too much in a single story. Yeah. Like we just we essentially we just took out the whole uh, crux <laughs> of the legend of Korra. Yeah, there's 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 no Tenzin, there's no Kaya, there's no Boomy too. Um, there's no oh, there's no airbending kids. Yeah, well, kids. and we we might believe uh, that you know uh, Republic City is still established, but how many of those? Yeah. How many key characters, even on the periphery, still stemmed from yeah. events that we have already <laughs> that we've just sort of negated? Um, now the only thing left from Legend Core that I think is interesting is that Rava now grows inside of Vatu, <clears throat> um, but there's in the Tree of Time, right? So. The question would be is can like right Rava Rava and Vatu are like a seesaw of power when <clears throat> when Vatu is trapped in there he's like well, actually Rava's lower than he is and so maybe if you add Rava to that could both of their energies burst through the tree of time I don't know I'll just say no on that part so for I'm, eternity I'd have to Rava... rewatch before I could even formulate an opinion <laughs> So for eternity, Rob and Vatsu would just be trapped in the Tree of Time, and the whole world would be in a balance of good and evil. There would be no darkness and chaos. There would also be no light and um, balance. There would be no need for the Avatar, and therefore by dying. <laughs> yeah, which is interesting. Boy, I almost made a video about just like, hey, killing an Avatar might be a good thing. Like because <laughs> they would both killing be... the avatar is a good thing if ozai also dies in the process you might want yes, to take care yeah. of him first or he might yeah. invent his own uh, uh chaos yeah i mean harmonic convergence would come along and nobody would know anything right be a little messy um, yeah so really i think from that point zaheer would never be a thing because harmonic convergence never happened um, well, I, I think yeah. the, I think I agree that Republic City would still stand, and you could have a lot of that background. But I think the way that it would develop as a city, you know, maybe it turns into like just a horrible, like a Gotham, and then that next Avatar, not Avatar, we created becomes Batman, and then All right, yeah. I'm cool with that. <laughs> no, but I just even just the climate of of the way Republic City is and the storylines. Yeah, I mean, all what, those could be what happens in the world know? without the Avatar, right? The Avatar's hope, as we've talked about before, lots of times. <laughs> um, and the it's world dancing. had a hundred years. And the world had a hundred years without Aang. Um, and I think a lot of people lost their hope, and a lot of people would do the same thing again. And in that, that that would be an interesting story of the new Avatar who has no real. Av- they're not the real Avatar. They just have four bending things. Like what type of responsibilities would they have? Um, which I have nowhere to go with that story, but I think it's just... Be, well, it's, uh, we, we've broken off a lot of branches there, but to, but yeah. we we did come up with what I would see as an extremely satisfying alternate story yeah. from all parts. I think it may, would uh, I think it's a good story, but then I also think it holds up uh, based on based on your research and scrutiny. Um, I think it holds up reasonably well. I mean, other than the fact that it's not canon because it didn't happen, I think as far as what if timelines go, <laughs> we constructed a very a very solid line. Yeah. Personally, but I'm biased. Um, that being so said, to, yeah. So to uh, to wrap up the story, Aang dies. Az- Katara almost kills Azula, but doesn't in the memory of Aang. Iroh, along with White Lotus members, kill Ozai for good, and Zuko takes the throne. Yeah. Very, very That's interesting. So we and thus we created fan fiction. The end. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. No, but and uh, if if uh, I'll say if anyone has uh, any uh, of their own what if scenarios uh, or questions, let us know. Maybe we'll uh, we'll do a video on on that. Mm-hmm. And also, what do you all think would happen if if uh, Katara healed Zuko's scar? What are we missing? What what are we overlooking <laughs> and then as you mentioned just other ideas for these what if videos i know you've got a laundry list of them but we also don't want to poach <laughs> like your the video ideas that you're tied to um for these kinds of things so what are some other what are some other topics that might make great what if scenarios for us uh to fill in on an as needed basis when when baby forward is born in <laughs> may 
May. Pretty much exactly a month. Baby, baby boy Ford is born mid-May. I can remember that. Uh, no, Chris, this <laughs> is a great idea. I think uh, I think I'm gonna enjoy putting together a few of these to to fill in where needed. In fact, uh, looking forward to the next one already. Solid idea. You called it before we started. You're like, anytime we set a time, it's gonna go about forty percent more. How about a hundred percent more? What a hundred percent more? But it was natural and it flowed well, and I liked that. So, but that's enough from us. I think this time. I'm Sean Taylor. That's Chris Ford, a.k.a. The Objective Geek on YouTube and Twitter. This has been Avatar The Last Podcaster's first ever what-if scenario. Thanks for hanging out, and we will talk to you guys soon.